Hey, get it, guys. It's Calvin from the Couching Company in New Zealand. Doing this AMC Spirit for Steve. First video, got long enough. Let's put speed sensor testing in the second one. And my ears are ringing from making it run. I did a bit of speed test sensor testing the other day. So I'm going to throw that footage in. And I had it all working yesterday. Everything was working beautifully with my test rig. And I thought I'd just better double, triple, quadruple check it. I'm choosing to use a Dakota digital unit. The main issue is I've got a speed sensor that has 32 pulses and the ECU that wants to see four. So 32 per revolution against four per revolution. So I had it on one of the settings on the Dakota digital unit and it didn't give me the full eighth drop. One eighth divided by one eighth. So it was, it was only about six and a half times reduced and that would cause the transmission to not run right. I'll throw on that speed sensor testing I did the other day as I was playing with my scope. Let's have a look at that now. As part of this job, I'm playing speed sensors. And as I've mentioned before, we need to make the speed sensors kind of work. And I've got multiple plans, because this is the biggest holdup of this job, is getting all the speed sensors to talk. Now the very back speed sensor, because I'm using a 20 series loom, we don't need it anymore. We only need the one. What do I do with that housing? I'll get the housing. 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 Now this is the next generation. The Crown housing has a slip joint. But it does have a speed sensor there, which, which is that one there, which screws on to a drive. So it's fantastic because you can unscrew that, screw whatever cable, whatever you want on it. So that's the back one. This is the next generation of speed sensor off a Celsius. And then we have this one here, the little one. Uh, it's here. The little one, short. And the next gearbox, transmission, has this kind. I'm playing washers. So they're different. Two wire, three wire. And that's where the fun begins, is making both of those work properly. So I've dug around and found my old diagrams and scribbled some notes. And I'm, I'm just doing some testing on this sensor first, just having a look at it. For no other reason other than I can. And it's nice to bring up a bit of a repertoire of, of what signal should be. And it's exactly what I expected it to be. The same as your late model Toyota type speed sensors. Um, a Hall effect, um, 12 volt in with a, a digital signal. And I've got a little copy of it. Oh, there it is, look at that. We can actually see it. Here we go. It's a digital signal. So to test it, I have my scope, have my drill. And it gives me a pattern. It's working, I'm happy. I'm updating my notes, checking everything's good. And we're going to test this one as well. So now I've got my trans uh, housing. And I'm just gonna hold this approximately the right distance away. Holding a nice clean 10 foul. And we generate a signal. It looks like that. It goes up, back down. If it's connected wrong, it goes the wrong way. Funny that, eh? So there's my signal. Got the proper one that goes with this ECU. 
and I'll run it up and we'll have a look at the signal. So we don't need the power on this one, because it's only a two watt. The voltage, so we go in earth. And that's going to be in pin two. And a signal, that's going to be pin one. And I, I am just guessing. We do the same thing, we tuck it in here. 10,000. See if we can get it, eh? Look at that. Very, very similar picture. Possibly got a little bit more amplitude. So I have a plan. And I have a plan A, and I have a plan B. Everything's working. We're going to run this one. We're going to attempt to run this one. If that doesn't work, then this one's going in the hole with spaces. But this vehicle's going to change gear and it's going to work. I've done enough testing. So we have a plan. We have plan A. Use this one, which I've got the plugs on the loom to do it. Plan B, we have to swap to this one. Remove the interface. No voltage. There is a signal. So I'm just running the drill. Holding it approximate. And I'm getting quite a nice signal. Problem I have is I didn't actually do anything. Hmm. Plug that back in. Okay. We go. We know that produces a signal. So we're going to pop this back into the Dakota digital unit. Put the scope on. Oh, we're looking for the little red dot to be flashing. Again. And it's not recognizing it. Nothing. I'm going to spend a bit more time working on some settings, trying to get this information to feed in. I'll get it. Right, so that's where we were. Just uh, yesterday, I got my 4HE um, distributor, like I do, same one I use for my crank sensor testing, because it's pretty much the same signal as that, except it's 24 times. So we want to drop it um, a difference. This doesn't actually know the RPM. The, the ECU doesn't know the RPM. It works out the RPM and calculates the speed via the number of pulses it receives. So it doesn't know that that drill press is doing 400 or 500 RPM. It just counts the number of pulses coming in. And of course it calculates through tires and all those sorts of things. So I would have liked more adjustment. Because if we've got smaller tyres or a different diff ratio, it would allow us more adjustment. However, I do have a backup plan. Um, there is someone here in New Zealand that works at an electronics uh, repair shop. And they may have just recently received a very, very good deal on a Link ECU. That was one of my backup plans. So, um, But I can always keep that plan for another day, for another project. 
But for now, I think we're working with this one. There are some other plans. Of course, I had multiple plans. One of them was to pull the tail shaft off the transmission and cut some teeth off it. And that still may be one of my preferred plans, actually. Um, and if it was easy to access, then I think that would be a good way. However, having a box to modify the speed signal can have its advantages. So we can adjust it a little bit, change shift points. If you like it in power all the time, then it would give you power as normal and another set of shift points above that, which some people might like. So anyway, let us, I've got my unit over there, have a bit of a look, we'll do some more testing with the ECU attached, um, and uh, I'll show you a little bit of what I found, and hopefully it'll kind of make sense and might even be helpful for a few people. So in my drill press, we have the 4AGE distributor. Turn that on, that's sending a signal. That's coming over via this wire, into this plug, which is my rear speed sensor plug. The extra wire is a 12 volt supply, modified to suit this sensor here. I have my little scope. I'm not sure we're gonna get good patterns. One day I'll get a scope on my laptop and I go to signal in. And you can see it's giving a wiggly line. I'll change that divisions. I don't think we've got a very good earth. That's better. I had a bit of an earthing issue. So there we have the signal. We'll just power the unit up. So now the box is powered up on, and it was on um, 2.25. Signal going out. That's not a very good picture. And there's the signal going out. The square wave. It's a square wave, but it's below zero. We'll just turn that noise off, shall we? There's a hay baler on the back of the tractor. So you saw my, my signals. One of them's up with a point, down, up. The other one's a square wave. However, both of them are a signal below zero. This, this is, imagine this is zero. Both of them go below zero, like an, like an AC voltage. One's a digital AC, it goes below zero. And the ECU only measures the up piece, or the down piece. It only measures, imagine every second part of the signal. So that's why this unit can produce a square but with zero in the middle of the signal, not it's not all above zero, and the ECU recognizes it. So I'm gonna turn that back on, make some more noise, and I'll show you that the ECU, through the scan tool, is picking up some speed. Let's see if I can find it. See right there? Nine kilometers per hour. If I increase this box, if I push the increase box, the drill hasn't changed in, in speed. We're now measuring sort of 13, 14 kilometers per hour. Back down it goes. So that's giving me the desired result. Signal, 
Back it comes. All good. However, that's this sensor equivalent. Connected this one. No go. We're here for a challenge. We're good. Even getting a good pulse into this because I can't put it into my housing because it's too shallow. So I'm going to work out a way to get this to produce enough of a signal that this box picks it up and that ECU reads it. Let me do some testing and I'll come back to you soon. Life is meant to give us challenges at times. So in all my testing, I got this unit to work perfectly. <sighs> but I'm super glad I had Steve send me down the proper sensor. Uh, where is it? This one. Did I mention that Crown 131 Crowns did stuff way different? Well, if I haven't, I have now. They do shit way different. This was sort of left over from... Um, like, it's similar to some of the um, cruise control, I think they were, sensors I've got. Because I had this other one, which was really similar. I couldn't get it to interface. Sometimes I want to hit things interface. Uh, but I couldn't get it to interface with the decoder unit. My test unit, my 4AGE distributor, perfect. Factory one with the drill. Factory one with the drill, perfect. This one, could get a scope pattern. Nothing into the dec decoder digital box. And of course, when nothing else works, we read the instructions. Because that's how guys work. And I did. It needs one volt AC. This is producing like 0.4, 0 0.5 of a volt, if I'm really lucky. And I was testing it at quite low speeds. But I'm okay with that. But we weren't getting lots of amplitude. And that's probably why it wasn't working, because that needs one volt and this is half a volt. I'm missing half a volt. And maybe I should mention too, um, my crown stuff, I shelved all that crown stuff years ago because they weren't very common in New Zealand and I hadn't done one for about four or five years. I've got this one to do and I've got another one to do. So anyway, plan B, C, D, I don't know where I am in my plans. I've changed, gone through a few, but to get the vehicle going, Steve happens to be quite good at engineering, probably because he's an engineer. And he is going to mount a normal speed sensor into his gearbox, run it through the Dakota Digital, drop the pulses by a factor of eight, so divide it by eight, and it will work. We're good. I also deliberately put a universal plug on the loom. I could use the other sensor that runs 20 pulses per revolution. Drop that by five, by a factor of five, bam, that works as well. But he wants to use that one for a speedo. We've got solutions. I'm happy enough, I'll chat with Steve, I'll give him some options, and um, all will be good. I've actually done this job in the past, where I've done the same stuff, and I got it to work. It was so long ago, I don't remember what box I used. Not too worried. We have a second plan. We have a backup plan. We're all good. I'm all happy. This vehicle is going to work. And it's going to go well. So, I'm going to put another plug on one of those sensors. Steve will sort it. I'm happy. Hope that was helpful. And we'll talk to you again soon. Catch you later.